put on my film critique glasses. When it comes to sheer majesty and magnificence, nothing quite compares to the vast and all-encompassing world of film. From the high-budget Hollywood blockbusters to the fresh cultural kick in the face of a classic international film, the art of cinema has a ridiculous knack for capturing what it really means to be human. Unfortunately, the cultural insight that foreign films bring to the table is overwhelmingly shadowed by the behemoth that is the North American film industry. While it's not surprising that English-speaking films are far more popular in a largely English-speaking country, the huge underrepresentation of groundbreaking international films is disheartening at best. In this episode, we'll be exploring the expansive world of foreign film through Swedish Heart Trister, Simple Simon, and Beiru's critically acclaimed Caramel, as well as highlighting the myriad similarities and differences within both films. Take these off. I feel silly. So, let's kick off with Caramel. The film uncovers the dynamic lives of five Lebanese women whose lives interconnect through a Beirut salon. The intricacies and stark contrasts of these women are explored in a way that somewhat accurately reflects the real 21st century women of Lebanon. Each character has their own set of demons, their relationships, identity, and self-image plague them throughout the film and contribute to the eventual attachment the viewer is positioned to hold towards them. Caramel, in essence, is about life in Lebanon, the challenges and adversities that every human being can relate to. These challenges are presented with ingrained cultural influences that give us a considerable foreign insight, which would have otherwise gone awry. One of the major strengths of Caramel is the thorough, complex characterization. The writers have created a truly intriguing world that accurately reflects their own attitudes, values, and beliefs, and reveals the social injustices that Lebanese women must face on a daily basis. A great example of this is the character Leal. Her relationship with a married man means her having to make countless sacrifices in terms of her morals and lifestyle. From meeting in desolate, dodgy back streets to booking rooms at hotels for them to stay, her relationship is far from accessible and often puts her livelihood and social standing at risk. Once Lael begins to have contact with the man's wife, however, she begins to question the healthiness of such a relationship and whether she can contribute to the suffering of someone so kind-hearted and innocent. Jamal is another character who has an intriguing backstory. As an older woman in her 50s, she is obsessed with the idea of youth and petrified of any signs of aging. She auditions for acting roles and cakes herself in beauty products in order to feel and look younger, with limited results. In certain cases, she even fakes her period in order to trick people into thinking that she has a menstrual cycle. The lengths that Jamal goes to are fueled by her utter paranoia of age, which unfortunately is an uncontrollable process and an integral part of life. To the audience, she symbolizes society's sickly obsession with youth, the complete and utter lie that beauty is determined by age. The writers of Caramel have taken this construct and given it life through the character of Tremal, whose fixation on such concepts stops her from enjoying herself in her later years. She chooses to focus on temporary and finite glamour associated with youth, rather than wisdom and fulfilment that can only be achieved through age. Oftentimes, audiences feel the need to put characters in a box. They want to have recognisable villains and heroes, but put simply, this is just not how people are. It's not so not how the characters are portrayed within Caramel. Each woman has recognisable faults and successes throughout the storyline, which leads to the accurate portrayal of human beings, not some glamorised, hyper-exaggerated Hollywood version, which we so often see reflected through the acting, production and characterization. The obvious influence of Lebanese culture on this film has allowed for a more realistic portrayal of the film's personas, and personally, I couldn't be gladder. As a conceptually similar western counterpart to Caramel, Love Actually is a brilliant romantic comedy which follows the lives of eight couples living in London, UK. While the film has obvious structural similarities to Caramel in the way that the focus of the story weaves and diverges throughout these different characters' lives, the substance, set, and characterization itself is literally a world away. Rather than the grounded, realistic representation of characters found in Caramel, many of the personas within Love Actually are highly exaggerated. The binary of good evil found in myriad western films is seen time and time again in Love Actually. For example, uh, the President of the United States is depicted as a manipulating bully, which he may well be. Whereas the uh, Prime Minister of the UK is perceived as innocent and kind-hearted, which he may well not be. While this effect is less extreme than in other western films, the difference is still clear as day when compared against Caramel. Setting is also romanticised. <laughs> I get it, yeah, nice. <laughs> Got so many people high-fiving me. 
uh, in love actually, far more than in Caramel, uh, the slums, back streets and lower class neighbourhoods that can be found in Beirut are not missing from the film, whereas love actually often finds itself set around Christmas time in upper middle class London. Despite the fact that love actually is a great film in its own merit, and believe me, it's one of my favourites, uh, <laughs> the cultural differences uh, where the as to where the film was written, uh, directed and produced create a glamorised representation of everyday life. This is standard of the Western film industry, however, and doesn't make the film a worse experience on its own. Yet the insight and truthful depiction found in Mary Foran films is something to be desired in our culture. Furthermore, Caramel is a film for realists. It reveals the dark underbelly of Beirut, the social constructs and expectations, and leaves a foreign audience feeling a sense of culture shock, even. Love Actually, on the other hand, is a film for escapists. Its ridiculous at tantalising scenarios and central theme of love create a romanticised version of modern day United Kingdom. Both films give us an insight as to where the Eastern and Western film industries currently lie in terms of artistic vision. Alright, next up on the chopping block, a Swedish film by the name of Simple Simon. Simon lives with high-functioning Asperger's Syndrome. He's incredibly intelligent in the fields of physics and mathematics, but his social ineptitude holds him back from his true potential and often leads him into peculiar situations. Simon's brother, Sam, looks at him and understands his illness, unlike anyone else. They form an inseparable bond over the years. Simon's presence at Sam's house, however, causes myriad interferences in the lives of Sam and his girlfriend, Frida. Frida eventually decides to walk out on Sam for choosing Simon over her, and Sam spirals into a state of depression. Seeing as Simon can only identify rudimentary emotions, he sees Sam in distress and decides to find a new compatible girlfriend through a series of surveys and tests. Ooh. It's a lot, it's a lot of, a lot of plot, a lot of plot. The Simplified. Ah, yes. We know well. The uh, premise of Simple Simon is to educate the public about the effects of Asperger's Syndrome and to show the true power of platonic love. Simple Simon really succeeds when it's identifying the many difficulties of living with and around Asperger's Syndrome in a warm, light-hearted fashion. While many Western films would find it incredibly risky and far too difficult to bring light to these situations in a humorous, yet not mean-spirited, manner, the Swedish film executes it perfectly in a completely inoffensive, incredibly informative way. Sam thrives under environments of consistency and predictability. He expects things to remain the same day after day, week after week. And when that balance is disturbed, he becomes confused. This world, however, is in a constant state of chaos and entropy. Scientific theory cannot predict how he lives his life. There is no formula for human being. Due to Sam's incredibly mathematical mind, his understanding of human beings is limited to rudimentary facial expressions, which is the main complication throughout the film. All of this and more are real issues that people with Asperger's Syndrome have to deal with on a daily basis. In addition, the characterization within the film, much like Caramel, realistically depicts the emotions, attitudes and archetypes of normal human beings. Simon, the emotionally challenged genius, often means well but misunderstands the levity of the situation he is trying to remedy. Throughout the film, Simon tries to rejuvenate love, Sam's love life through a series of formulas. Problem being, however, that people cannot be calculated. Simon sees Jennifer as the missing link in his formula. The end to all of his brother's heartache and a return to the consistency he once enjoyed, when Jennifer is not, in fact, compatible with Sam at all. Sam is a young man in his 20s who feels responsible for his brother, Simon. Despite this, however, he is not portrayed as an angel, unable to do wrong. He becomes depressed and angry as the film progresses, even lashing out and abandoning Simon at one point. Frida, while abandoning Sam, was not an innate antagonist within the film. She loved and cared for Sam, but was simply insensitive and uninformed towards Simon's condition. Each of these characters are written in a way that isn't just good or evil, black or white but rather a spectrum of grey, as all people are, again. This is a major success of the film and allows the audience to attach themselves to certain characters, as well as formulate their own interpretations of characters and events. I Am Sam is a western movie that explores very similar concepts, and not just the names either, mind you. Sam, an intellectually challenged adult, faces the trials and tribulations of raising a small child and fighting for a custody. In the process, however, he teaches the people around him the true significance of family. Despite the few instances where the character archetypes in I Am Sam were exaggerated and glamorized slightly, in true Hollywood style, mind you, both films in question do a reasonable job of educating the audience 
of the difficulties of living with a disability. Through Simon and Sam and Simple Simon, or Sam and his child, Lucy, and I am Sam, the protagonists are humanized through their ability to feel integral human emotions, such as love. Both Simon and Sam would go to unbelievable lengths to be with or assist the ones they love the most. The films have their fair share of notable differences too. The mental disabilities that Sam and Simon have are completely different beasts. High functioning Asperger's syndrome, the disability that Simon has, allows for an insanely high IQ with very little emotional intelligence, whereas Sam's disability left him with the intelligence of a seven year old. The characters in I Am Sam are also quite black and white in comparison to a film such as Simple Simon. There's a clear defined antagonist, a protagonist to get behind, and a female lead who changes her mind over the course of the movie. It's pretty stock standard stuff, and leaves very little to interpretation in comparison to Simple Simon. I Am Sam is set in the hustling bustling concrete jungle of New York, whereas the small town aesthetic of Simple Simon accurately depicts a far smaller Swedish village. Environments, food and architecture from both films reflect these setting choices. Many of the Swedish dwellings in Simple Simon have an excess of IKEA furniture in them, believe them or not, whereas the uh, iconic New York parks, eateries and apartments have made their way into nearly every shot in I Am Sam. It is clear that through the various influences of the writers, directors and producers, the settings of these films have been influenced by the heritage and background of the filmmakers themselves. To recap, both I Am Sam and Simple Simon are marvellous films that tackle incredibly different issues in an entertaining fashion. Through different cultural lenses, Eastern and Western films interpret the art quite differently, which is evident through the storyline, plot, social issues and settings that are presented. As a Westerner and an avid film reviewer, having access to these differing perspectives breaks down many of the walls we have constructed for ourselves. The customs and traditions of film are more often than not challenged through outside perspectives, and sometimes it's necessary. The Western echo chamber can only provide a limited amount of creative genius without breaking a few rules here and there. That's all for today. Thanks for tuning in once again. I'll see you next week.